We've got some Rough Stuff Specialties traction bar parts here, and we're going to put them on this 68 Ford F250, which looks like a 68 Ford, but really inside an 06 Super Duty. So this will have everything to do with any truck, but an 06 Super Duty specifically. The Rough Stuff frame brackets consist of this frame bracket here and a gusset for the bottom like that and they'll go somewhere through here depending on how we decide to make our decisions with setting this truck up I've got some tubing here and I have ordered tubing for 60 inch bars because I think 72 is going to be too long and 48 is going to be too short so these 60s will be right in the middle this is our bracket that goes on the rear axle and we'll weld right to the housing one of the one end of this tubing gets coped with a hole saw or a fancier tool if you have one and we'll get this welded on and this set of bushings put in it and they are what goes in the bracket that get welds to your rear axle housing the other end simply gets trimmed to length and these threaded tube adapters get welded in and your rod ends have some adjustability in them and a jam nut at this front edge of this bracket we already talked about that goes at the frame so we got to decide how to lay them out so our goal here is to put a bar in that works with the rear suspension and doesn't create any binding and at the same time controls wheel hop and axle wrap locates that axle firmly but lets the suspension and springs do the things they were originally intended to do with leaf springs axles rarely go straight up and down they usually travel slightly forward on droop and slightly rearward on compression now ford has this particular truck set up where this spring mount is quite a bit lower than the rear spring mount so that minimizes this but still to a reasonable degree this axle does not go straight up and down rather than going perfectly straight up and down on compression it moves slightly back on droop it moves slightly forward if that's why a traction bar won't go straight forward it's going to go slightly uphill which is good because that's what it takes to get to your frame rail anyways so a lot of what you need to decide is what arc your traction bars are going to travel on if they were super short and super steep they'd be traveling like this and that's where your axle would need to travel in order to not bind just the same if your bars were super long and super flat they'd have almost no arc at all but your axle would need to go straight up and down in order to accommodate that so it's going to be splitting a difference between a long bar with little arc and a short bar with more arc but putting the arc at the right place so we're going to work hard to set up a set of traction bars that look good and function well and don't hang so low that it looks like you could get stuck on a piece of firewood um, we want them to be something that looks like it was supposed to be on this truck in fact I think this truck's gonna look even more natural with them because we're not going to see so much of this fuel tank that you can see on this truck uh, when we get these bars painted a color that makes them show up a little bit in order for this to not be any more low hanging than needed Rather than putting this straight on the bottom of the axle, I'm going to rotate it around just a little bit in the front so that it does raise ground clearance. Now, if we went clear out here, it would have much less effect on controlling wheel hops. So 45 degrees is really pushing it. So 40 degrees or less off of center, a straight 90 down off the bottom would be very adequate in controlling hop, but would put your bar as low as possible towards the ground at the axle end with the 60 inch tubing length we're starting with with the addition of the parts on each end we can be quite a bit longer than 60 inches if we want if i hold the tape measure back at the axle on the tube right around 60 inches you see we're at that fuel tank strap if i bring it back here to where we're on the flat of the frame i feel that we're probably fighting the arc of the axle too much because that would have the axle moving back pretty far and with this design, I really don't think that that arc is quite that far. And you just stand out there at the side of your truck and look at the spring and look at that axle and decide. You can kind of see the arc that it's going to have based on imagining if that spring got compressed, what would happen from this pivot point to the middle. 
back there floats on the shackle. Pivot point to the middle of your block. Up and down, you can imagine that arc going back and forth. I feel like we need to go past this fuel tank bracket and mount right there on this sloping part of the frame, which gets me to almost 65 inches. We're definitely going to be pushing it with the parts that we have, but I think it's going to make it. So I slide this bracket right back to that fuel tank strap. Looks like I need to go past the fuel tank strap about two and a half inches. And if I touch the front of the axle tube, I'm at 64 and a half inches. I say the front of the axle tube because I rotate this around where we're pretty close to the front of the axle tube with this eyelet. With a tube adapter and a jam nut past the end of our 60 inch tubing or about 60 inches, we're going to be able to gain three and a half inches or more, nearly four inches. So our 60 inches already turned into 64 inches, which to me says we have enough. And our weld on bushing is going to give us just a little bit on the other end of the tubing, but we're going to use every inch of that 60 inch material. If you're worried about this exact scenario, order 72 inches of material. Well, here is our 68 slash 06 with its traction bars on. Also, Rough Stuff Specialties Parts built radius arms up front, and it turned out good. Let's talk about how the install went. Well, I've had no time whatsoever to paint or powder them so they're still raw and getting a little rusty but sandblasting takes care of that you get it done and uh, the install went exactly like we laid it out you didn't need to see us drill a hole at the end for tubing notching that's how you run a drill you didn't need to see us cut the end off to put the uh, tube adapter in that's straightforward welding is welding no big deal we'll cut we'll discuss a couple particulars to give you some hints to make it easy but otherwise, this is what the project turned out like, and this is about how that theory turned into reality. Like we said, placement, front and rear, rotated forward, right back against the fuel tank straps. It's exactly where we wanted. It seems to meet a nice arc with the rear suspension. I've driven it lots, works good. One of the tricky parts of installing these is welding upside down. No big deal if you weld all the time. But if you don't, that's the harder part. You've got to turn your welder up higher than usual. So welding on the top of this isn't too bad. You can see we moved it outboard a little bit so that we didn't have to get too close to the fuel tank when welding that side. But something I almost always do to these Rough Stuff brackets, and it wouldn't bother me if they always came that way from Rough Stuff, is right in the top, cut yourself a nice big hole, either with a torch or a hole saw, and that way from the bottom you can do a good plug weld in case you're not able to reach everywhere around there and that's a pretty simple way of getting that done and because it's hiding up in there it doesn't have to be super pretty uh, to do an effective job back at this end of the bar you can see a little bit from this angle how we rotated those forward so as not to be hanging too low another thing you can see is it's in the middle of the u-bolt so it's a little hard to weld on the left and right that's okay I suggest welding on the insides because it holds just as good and if you're not a skilled welder where you're welding all the time and your welds are going to be just okay, well they hide in there pretty good and you can always get a bead on the back side. Here's the back side. It was easy to get a weld across the back of there and again you can see it between the U-bolts. It can be mounted left and it can be mounted right. They don't have to be completely parallel with the frame rail. The rubber bushing at this end and the rod end at the far end allow for some misalignment, no problem there. They're a fairly simple install and they work really good. I dirt dragged with them the other night, sand course all choppy and uh, wheel hop in the rear was nothing to think about. The front bounced up a little bit but these super duties are kind of prone to do that and uh, it was not hurt at all by the fact that I've got some nice rough stuff specialties built radius arms up front that we put together out of their parts. 
again if we stand back away from the truck a little bit and look at this rear axle kind of eyeball the rear suspension and the way it moves up and down you can see that there's an angle that now you can envision what that arc is based off that pivot point at the front so there you see the general install and how it laid out of these rough stuff specialty bars it's all super heavy duty parts super heavy steel that's quarter inch wall two inch tubing these are indestructible from this kind of use not only could you use them for controlling wheel hop and the power in a diesel truck but uh, you could drop those things down on a rock and they're not going to bend that's what they were really designed for was beating them off road so if you're thinking about ordering a set of these yourself and seeing if you can do them yourself or with some help just a quick review here's your frame bracket goes up near the front somewhere that's not too low and not too high gonna have to study your rear suspension to decide where that goes but they're all very similar to this like I said I don't mind cutting a nice hole there so you can do a nice big plug weld around the inside where nobody can see how bad you did upside down welding is not always the, the easiest if you don't do it all the time up here you can often do a right hand side weld out here and the and this one can be uh, less obvious but again we outboarded this a little bit just so that it would be easier to reach and not have fuel tank interference in this bracket goes these big gnarly inch and a quarter rod ends from some rough stuff these are awesome joints this end of the tube gets a flush cut but I'd cut that last because this just slips in and welds around there first I'd be running a hole saw through here to get your fish mouth or notch cut out of there if you have a fancy tool that's great so that this piece of round tubing fits in it and gets welded on there so if you have your bracket welded on your frame at about 20 degrees or something like that forward of, of straight down this can go in this can go on and you can swing this thing up run your bolt through the front and lay out where this goes and these things are a piece of cake anybody that has the ability to work on their own truck and get anything done on it probably can get these done if you don't have a welder find somebody that does and bring a case of beer and they might uh, fix you right up rough stuff specialties far from stock helping you modify your ride don't think i would leave you with a cool video like this without burning some tires now this ford might let you down with a one wheel peel but we'll see what we can do I wouldn't call that a traction torture test of any kind. Looking for wheel hop, we better try that again. That's a little more what I meant to test. So do go buy yourself some Rough Stuff Specialties traction bars from farfromstockstore.com and don't go buy a Ford factory limited slip differential. I'm gonna say that again when there's no car coming by. And here is 